Hello friends, my name is Dane Miller. And my name is Niall Spain, and we're your fuck buddies. We are a dating and sex advice podcast where we take your sticky, sexy situations and turn them into sexy, sticky situations. Simply put, we find questions either sent to us by our wonderful listeners or online. We answer them right here, right now, in your ears, every Monday, and also on stage and or on Patreon. It's true. I have no idea when this episode comes out. No I don't idea. We uh, we're going away for a little bit, so we're we're recording on mass and uh, what when this comes out, I'm not sure. So I can't even like I don't even maybe it's after the live show. So do we even talk about it? I don't know. I don't know. But if we say something that some reason is now really offensive because something has happened between now and then it's not our fault. It's July 20th. Okay, it's July 20th. If so, we say something that's super offensive that was still very much super offensive on July 20th, it's July not, 20th, 1986. Yes. And it all goes in 86, brother. Uh, I'm very warm. How are you? <laughs> super sweaty. Well, let's get sweaty. Are you ready? Yeah. This is by Inside Chemical 6740. Gross. How did get them to spend time with me post-intimacy? Female 32. So, long story short, a guy and I ended up taking it to the next level, and I would have thought it was a hopeless one-off thing if he didn't come back. Now I'm hopelessly attached to him and want to spend some time with him. He says he wants to see me again, but he's become very casual and I'm freaking out a bit. All the advice I've gotten about being aloof, act disinterested, be unavailable, has only pushed him further away. I'd like to ask him if he wants to go on a proper date, but I feel like I'm doing everything wrong. So far, all of his yeses have been yes-nos. Says yes, but means no, and doesn't set a date for plans. Can someone tell me how to go about this post intimacy? <laughs> so much in this question that so I want him to be more engaged with me. So I've ignored him and been aloof with him. Why? Why is that driving him away? No, I can't figure it out. Well, I just, see, I just can't get it. That's why I brought this question because it's so complex. Like there must be something else going on because she's like ticking every box, right? <laughs> I, I, I slept about with you. him. And then started ignoring him and acting aloof and seeming Being disinterested. And yeah. Yeah. And, and like, like, why Why would you hook up with someone and be like, oh, this is hopeless. This is a hopeless thing that I'll never see again. And it's like, I, and by all means, have a one night stand, hook mm-hmm. up with someone once, whatever. That's cool. But like, it's weird to go into it thinking like being like, this is a hopeless romantic encounter because like, yeah, you either really- want to hook up with someone once and that's fine. Or you're looking for something more long term, in which case you should sort of like put that expectation out. yeah i honestly don't really understand what this means we took it to the next level and i would have thought it was a hopeless one-off thing if he didn't come back now i'm hopelessly attached to him and want to spend time with him so it's like either way it's hopeless which is very sad and also indicative of where this person's at but it's like are you saying because he now texts you you're like oh i'm hopelessly attached but if he hadn't texted you with him like it's a hopeless one-off thing yeah just- it seems like regardless of what the the outcome was was like either he was never going to talk to you again and that's not what you want. Mm-hmm. But now you're into this dude and that's also not what you want. And he seems to continue to like want to spend time with you. And you're like, this can't, this is the worst possible situation. Mm-hmm. And the only thing other than this that could have been worse is if he didn't do this. And it's like, yeah. what's the, the happy medium that you were looking for between never seeing this person again and seeing them again? Another toxic thing here is like the focus on post intimacy. Because in their mind, everything has changed because they had sex. Yeah. It's, it's the same shit. Like, nobody really cares. I mean, Are unfortunately, you, well, I, th- I think a lot of people care. That's a big reason why we have this show. Well, I know. But I mean, like, normal people don't care. And I also think it's the opposite problem where it's like, if you've already had sex, it's like that barrier has been broken. So you could just be like, hey, do you want to come over and have more sex? You know, whereas if it's post, like pre-intimacy, you can't. Or at least, like, that's a harder kind of thing it's, to It's travail. a much bolder move, yeah, to yeah, be like, yeah. hey, come so over like, and fuck. Things should be easier now. So the, there's there's so much here of being like, okay, I, I'm into this guy, and I want to see him more. 
but you've decided to be aloof because the internet has told you that, yeah. or you well, know, Cosmo has told you that's bad. If that's you, bad. Like, let's talk about that right now. That is we, bad advice. You're a bad person in dating if you're doing this. So yeah, shocker, that's not fucking working. What well, if he was like, yeah, this girl doesn't like me. Let's pursue her. Then he would be the bad one. And presumably his yes, no answers, which I also don't really know what that means, are a reflection of what you're giving him. Yeah. Right. You're you're probably playing this like aloof and not wanting to commit to plans and not Mm -hmm. asking him to do anything. So he's probably matching your energy and it's just like, okay, well, like, I guess if it happens, it happens. But like, I'm not going to. Yeah, I'm not going to invest a whole lot of energy or time and effort into someone who's giving me nothing in return. This dude seems to be like dating like a a normal human Mm -hmm. and being like, if you're going to give me attention, I will reciprocate that attention. But if you're not going to give it to me, then I will also not return it. It, It's that simple. Even just so far, all of his yeses have been yes, no's. Like what? Like, what does that mean? What does that mean? And also you're saying he says yes, but means no and doesn't set a date for plans. When you set a date, if you're asking and he's saying yes, but then a date's not happening. It's not his fault. It's your fault. And it's also, again, you're acting aloof. So, like, I wouldn't be putting... If someone was like, hey, we should hang out and be like, yeah, for sure. Like, when are you available? Whenever. Yeah. Or even, even just like, we should hang out sometime. Yeah, absolutely. I agree. And then, yeah, we, we, But it's like, if, if that's if that's all you've given me, if, that's, if you just keep yeah. every now and then being like, you know, I guess it would be cool to see you. Yeah, if you don't seem into it, I'm going to move on quite yeah. happily. Or or just leave you sort of like back pocket where, you know, if it happens it happens, but I'm not going to I'm not going to, you know, bend over backwards to try to spend time with someone who does not make it apparent that they want to spend yeah. time with me. In fact, are doing the opposite. So it's like, look, stop the being aloof, disinterested, unavailable bullshit. As you've pointed out, it's pushing him further away. It is wrong advice. Because if it attracts someone, it'll probably attract the wrong person. So just don't do it. Two, if you want to go on a proper date, ask him. Yeah, because again, if you're worried that you asking him on a date is going to result in a rejection. Well, I mean, that's better than just living in a weird amorphous limbo of not doing anything and just being Mm -hmm. like stressing out about them. Because if you're like, hey, do you want to go for drinks sometime? Or do you want to come over to my place and watch a movie? Do you want to like come over and hook up? And he's like, nah, oh, great, move on. He's not and, interested. And that's but, the thing. Right now, the amorphous thing they're living in is mini rejections constantly. So it's and we don't not, even we don't even know if they're mini rejections. No, but what I mean is like sh- that's what she's feeling, right? She's like yes. they're yes nos, they're this. He doesn't like like you're living in what is effectively one giant prolonged rejection, or at least that's what it feels like to her. So if you just got rejected, that would be so much better. Yeah, because then you can move on. You can, yeah. you can be like, oh, great. He's not interested in me. Uh, bye. It sounds like there's like, I, I think, three parts to this. One, you have uh, probably a fairly unhealthy relationship with sex because it seems like the second you had sex with this person, you became instantly more attached to them mm-hmm. and maybe started projecting the imp- importance onto this person that yeah. wasn't reciprocated immediately. That's and then... Spiraling. Yeah, and then you started playing games and being uh, dishonest and disingenuous by being aloof, despite the fact that you are apparently very into this person. So you've lied to him. So that is something you also need to deal with. And then you're not making any effort to commit to anything. You say you want to ask him out on a date, but then you don't. If you want to do something, ask him out. And it, like it all stems from, it's like, if you want to have a sexual relationship with this person, great, cool, do that. If you like this person and want to invest in him, do that. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to ask him out on a date, do it. All those things are fine, normal things to do. This is like the like, I don't don't know what the word is like toxic. It's just so, so toxic. Everything you're doing is toxic behaviors. You are sitting in this like ideal that like he has to do all the work. He has to ask you out. He has to do whatever, blah, blah, blah. It's like, just why? Why are you the one who's taking a back seat when it's something that's important to you? You're doing this toxic shit of being disinterested, this toxic shit. Like, it's all so toxic. Just step away from it. I would be absolutely not surprised if this was also the kind of person who was like, she has a script in her head or she has like, she has the idea of like what this, what he needs to do to, to really like win her over. And she's just waiting for him to like do this check mark. Well, she already is. Yeah. She's like waiting for him to set a date. And it's like, if you're like, what? Think about it. Why the fuck would he if you act like you don't want it? And if you want it, go for it. It's it's yeah. 
so simple and situation like this hurt me. Yeah. So you got a lot of work to do is what we're saying. You need to go right back to the drawing board and be like, do I want to have a sexual relationship? And am I capable of having sexual relationships with people and not becoming hyper attached after the fact? Start being honest and not lying about your intention with the people. If you're into them, be into them. If you're not into them, don't be into them. Mm -hmm. And then if you want to act out, like make a move on someone, make a move. Don't sit there and wait for them to do it because they might not know. So take a little bit of initiative. Uh, so we have an example of one of the questions in the comments of of what he yes no to. And guess what she asked him? What are you doing? Are we ever going to see each other again? And he was like, yeah. And she's like, and then he didn't set a date. It's like, okay. Yeah, again, like that's, that's, no, that's a nothing question. Also, it's not good. And hey, let me tell you, if someone asked me that and not in a joking way, like, oh, it's been a while since we've seen each other because we've been busy. You know what I mean? Like, mm -hmm. if it's not a very clear tongue in cheek joke about, you know, just not seeing each other for a while, I'd be running, running for the hills. I'd love yeah. to know, like, what the length of time they hadn't seen each other was. Oh, I imagine those. within a week. Immediately after he left. That's not a yes, no. He answered your question. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to see you again. Uh, this is from Zealous Edge 405. How do I tell my boyfriend I want him to be rougher with me? I, a 21-year-old female, my boyfriend, 23-year-old male, have a really healthy sexual relationship, and it's always been enjoyable, but I'm looking to explore some more kinks of mine and experiment with rougher sex. I've told him in the past that I want him to use more dirty talk and do things like choking, spanking, etc., but he seems to be scared of hurting me. How do I tell him exactly what I want him to do? Well, what is it that you exactly want him to do? Yeah, that's a great question, Dal, and I think an excellent place to start. Because if you're just saying, I want you to spank me, there is so many degrees of what spanking could be. It could be hand, it could be belt, it could be yeah. a whip. It could, it could be a toy, could, could be a paddle, could yeah. be hard, could be soft, Light. could be clothed, could be unclothed, could be like, you know, literally Funny. welt me up, get me red. Or it could be like, oh, I like it during sex or just as its own act. Mm-hmm. Could be a lot. That's step one. Like you need to know what you want specifically. Maybe you just didn't put it in the question, but it doesn't sound like you fully know. So I think that's a good place to start. An excellent Sec place to start. Yeah. Secondly, if he's worried about hurting you, talk to him about it. Be like, hey, I really appreciate that. That's great. That's how you should be as a good partner. What are ways we could do to mitigate that? Such as taking it slow, such as learning from, you know, whatever resources we can together, such as having a safe word. Mm -hmm. I think... Especially with stuff like this, choking, spanking are all things you can do incrementally. Yes. You can start slow. I would say I think there's far more risk when it comes to things like choking. For sure. Um, if it's not done correctly, there are plenty of uh, resources available online for kink and BDSM mm -hmm. to teach you how to uh, safely do these things. Uh, signs to look for at your partner in case they are getting lost in the sauce because they enjoy it so much, but are actually kind of like entering into a territory that might not be safe. Uh, Nonverbal safe words are really important when you're doing things like choking because yeah. you are obstructing airways. Um, one that I really like to use and I find is a, a, a really, really good one is uh, air horn peace signs. under the <laughs> yeah, have, have air, a horn air horn under the pillow. Um, a, a, a peace sign is a great way to do it. And it's like one is slow down. Or lighter, two is stop. And that's a great way to... <laughs> One is slow down or lighter, two is peace out. <laughs> Bye! Um, and that's that's a, that's a something I use. I think it's it's a great way to do it because it's like, it's not something your partner... If your partner is constantly throwing up <laughs> deuces, <laughs> <laughs> I, think I think you have wider problems in your sexual relationship. It's really weird to me that you're throwing it up like backwards. Because that's peace. And that's fuck you. Deuces. That's fuck you. Fuck you! What really? Yeah. We're okay. So I'm Bro, doing I, it with. Uh, so I'm doing it with. We're we're on camera. So I'm his I'm putting fingers pointing towards him. Yeah, like back, back of his of hands facing the world. And in Ireland, that's basically the middle finger. Like they're both huh. the same. So for me, it's when you turn your hand around and your fingers are facing outward. That's like the peace sign. I so it's just really funny to me. That's like you're like fucking them, and they're like fuck you. And you're like oh, and you fuck them hard, and they're like fuck you back, and that actually just means stop. So hey, maybe. I mean, like, you can use anything. Really you, can use, you. you can use thumbs up, but I think that is a confusing... No, don't do thumbs up. You gotta do I thumbs think, down. Yeah. Mm. But, but, uh, like, but Game raises but a really good said, point. No, sorry, please. Oop, I, I would no, love to hear No, I want to hear my good point. Good point. <laughs> uh, <laughs> um, the, the incremental thing of, of spanking, and like, that's a really fun way to spank, is to slowly increase 
and playing with like different speeds, different materials, different, different tools. Mm -hmm. Um, and finding that like that sweet spot of being like, you know what? I actually don't love your hand, but your belt is the sensation that I do like. Um, I will say a really, really important thing of spanking is taking a second. And, um, I know, like professional doms they have a um, a cloth that's usually made of like a really soft material or a soft fur like mm. rabbit fur cloth and sort of like rubbing the the spanked area helps one like comfort mm-hmm. but it also elevates the next round as well it because it like brings blood to the surface too yeah. And stuff, right yeah. Um, so, you know, think about that. You don't necessarily need to buy anything fancy, but like just taking a second and like, you gotta go you skin know. a rabbit right now. <laughs> yeah. It's the thing, you know, what you take do a minute is... to, to, to rub the butt a little bit to, yeah. to give them a break is, is a great way to elevate the experience. So when Dane talks about incremental spanking, he's not talking about your partner. Cause that's insane. Never touch your partner. You're going to go out in the woods. You're going to find a rabbit and you're going to sneak up on it and spank. And like, Oh, first one, Maybe it'll just shock it. Eventually, you'll find the sweet spot that kills it. Then you skin it. Then you've got your cloth. And there you go. It's like that experiment to see how how hard you have to slap a chicken and how many times to cook it through kinetic (laughs) force. Yeah, yeah. Um, No, obviously, that's not. That that was a joke. FBI, that was a joke. They hate when people smack rabbits. The the FBI, it's the federal bunny (laughs) investigation. I forget where we're even at. But yeah, the danger of spanking is like discomfort and pain. The danger of choking is like death. So yeah. like maybe don't dive into choking first. Yeah, ch- choking is a is a, a thing. I, I would definitely recommend uh, starting very, very light, moving slowly. So now said safe words. Like those are all things that can keep you safe. And like now said, find resources or even just find porn not necessarily for choking, because choking requires a specific technique that you can't just like get from looking at. Um, but like, if you find a porn where like someone is doing something that you like in a rougher fashion, be like, "Hey, that's this is something that turns me on." Inspire them, give them something to work with, give them some source material, uh, and I feel like that would would be a really fun way to explore your kink. Sit together and get naked and watch some some porn. Like you know, make a little playlist of of some stuff that you like. And and go through and be like this, that right there, that right there, this here. 100%. So start slow, do your research. And I mean that not in a hate vaccines way. You got it. You got it. You can do this. I believe in you. Uh, this is Nameless User. I'm a girl who's been rejected by almost everyone I've showed interest in. Hey, guys, I guess this is a rant slash question. I feel like there's a common trope of men approaching girls being rejected constantly. But I'm curious about how many girls out there get rejected, too. For context, not that matters much, and it cringes me to say this, but I would say I'm pretty physically attractive. I guess one indicator of this is that I'm a signed model at a top agency in New York City. I'm 22, so I'm in a huge dating pool for my age. I study neuroscience, and I would say I have a pretty good personality based on the opinions of people around me. But personality or anything about me as a person wouldn't even matter in this situation because I get rejected before it even reaches that point. I've DM'd guys on Instagram. I've shown direct interest in real life. I have my friends try and put me onto guys. And I'm perpetually rejected. Sometimes people answer my DMs and then it falls off immediately. Since I tend to get rejected pretty often, I don't approach people in real life that much. So maybe people are intimidated in real life, but even the buffer of social media doesn't help. I'm a direct person, so maybe that can be intimidating. But I've tried different approaches and nothing seems to work. This has been this way my whole life and it's pretty frustrating and confusing. I would just like to know if anyone feels the same way and does anyone have advice? You are living in the realm of the bots. Unfortunately, you are too hot. You are so attractive that no one thinks that you are real on social media, that you are a scam, and that you are up to something in in reality, or that you're so scary that guys are just like, uh, please, yeah, like, <laughs> please don't. That's the thing. People are like, oh, men are fucking horn dogs. Men will do whatever. Blah, 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 blah. We talked about here before. I know a girl who was very attractive, who did very well, but like, once she got like dumped and was like, I fucking I'm going out and getting laid tonight. And she couldn't for the life of her get laid when she was trying to be because everyone was like, what's this? What is this trap? What is this trick? If she had gone out and done nothing, she probably would have been flocked to. Yeah. You know, because it's just like it's not what men are used to in a lot of ways. And there is like an alarm bell that kind of goes off and you're like, wait a minute. But also, I think not a lot of women have to generally go out and try to seduce people. So a lot of the time they're like so aggressive or weird about it 
it's rare that you find and like ladies you know i love you you know i don't like to generalize but lady game is real bad yeah lady lady game is like one of two things i find generally it's either aggressively mean Mm -hmm. and they think it's funny and yeah. like they, they, you know, they're trying to neg you, and it, but they're just so bad at it because they're so used to being so defensive, mm-hmm. or so overtly sexual yes. that it makes you uncomfortable. Like those are like nine times out of ten, if I'm approached by a woman, it's one of those two things. Either they're going to be like ruthlessly mean to me and not understand why it's like, like I'm happy to trade barbs with you, a a, f- a friendly ribbing. I'm oh, I'm all great. about. That's great. But like a lot of women don't know when to stop. <laughs> yeah. There's also like art. There's an art to it. It's not just yeah. like, hey, fuck you, fuck face. It's like, what? Okay. Yeah. Uh, my favorite example of this is when women like either like come out as bi or come out in general and then are like finally unleashed into the dating pool and they're like, oh, let's go out. And like, I want to pick up girls. And they go up to women and they're awful. And I'm like, whoa, like you got to calm down. And I've seen this yeah. happen five different occasions and I wouldn't have expected it from at least three of them. Anyway. So that might be one thing. Maybe, maybe check your riz girl. It's, it, it's funny because like, yes, I love the idea because I think what happens when, when women do that is they, especially like you said with like, like I love watching by women hit on women because I think they uh, like embody all of the worst like male qualities yeah. and traits. They they're like, how have I been hit on in a bar before? And they don't go like they I don't didn't think like it. <laughs> yeah they don't think beyond the fact that like oh it sucked so hard and I hated it and it didn't work. They just like this is this is how you hit on women at bar. <laughs> just mm-hmm. like what are you doing? Stop. I also think a lot of it is like oh it's not threatening because I'm a girl not a guy. Mm-hmm. You know, but like, I've, I've just seen it go so poorly. Like, I've had people had to be taken aside and be like, hey, can you like tell your friend to fucking cool it? Because they're <laughs> just running around like a like a little imp just fucking like ruining people's nights. <laughs> yeah, uh, so it's... make sure you're chilling. Make sure you're chilling. It. Don't go into bot territory of like, hey, do you want to fuck? Like, I'm going to think you have boys waiting in an alley or something. Right. But also don't just go full aggression. Be chill. Think of how you would want to be seduced. In terms of like reaching out on social media, no. like you can't this... cold call someone, especially if you're a model. Yeah, it, like it's so suspicious. And the my my if you're gonna do that, you have to be willing to one carry the conversation because every dude is gonna be on like high alert and be like, when are you gonna ask me for my credit my card? bank deeds? Yeah, yeah. Um, so you're gonna have to and go in with a very specific conversation topic if the dude's a surfer and that's and you're a surfer great get in there talk about surfing or if you you know if he has a german shepherd and you love german shepherds or you you know what i mean like you have to go in with something very personal and not sexual yeah and be willing to sort of earn the trust of i'm a real person and i have a real reason to want to connect with you and mm-hmm. I'm not going to ask you for your bank information. Yeah. And the thing is, they're going to expect that you're looking for their bank information up until I'd say date four. Mm-hmm. And on top of that, it's like, why are you reaching out to people on social media? If you don't know them, you're just like, oh, this guy's kind of hot. Like, that's not a great way to meet people because, yeah, he might be hot. But like the kind of people who are going to be like, oh, this model's messaging me. I'll see if it goes anywhere and hope I don't get robbed are probably super desperate. Yeah, it's it, it's it's such a weird because like I I promise you most dudes would like look at a model and be like she can get laid whenever she wants but I do think that there is a there's a threshold of like physical attractiveness especially for women that is is almost detrimental to the cause because people are intimidated there's again like ninety percent of Tinder is bots now of of someone's stolen model photo so mm-hmm. it's we're we're weary and and cautious when really attractive people show up but in reality when you're out at a bar as Nell said you can't you can't go in hard and heavy because everyone's just gonna be like what the fuck is this you're gonna try to get me in an alley and rob me yeah like you've got you've got a dude in the alley waiting for me for sure and like i would love to know because they're like oh like before i get too far like it it ends it's like i would love to how are you rejected if you're not going off too quick right yeah are you like Hey, I like you. You want to come home with me? It's like, yeah, of course you're going to reject it. Maybe don't start with that. 
unless you're literally walking up to people and they're like, no, yeah, have a chat, have a drink with them. Like if I was like, I was about to say, if I was a guy, I am a guy. If I'm at a bar and I'm hitting on somebody, I don't, I in no way try to close things quickly in any sense because that's creepy and pushy and weird. Often I will like say hi to someone, walk away and talk to them later on. Like it's a fucking process, you know? So like, it should be a process for you too. And maybe that's it. Yeah. Maybe you're like, I'm so hot. I deserve this. Eh, you're still a person. That's what I'm worried that it's like a combination of, but I'm hot. Why isn't yeah. this working? And that's coming through as like, kind of like a shitty, bitter undertone that mm-hmm. people are picking up on. And also, a combination like, of people's like general reactions to really attractive people. There's, there's a suspicion. I think a lot of it as well is like, I've seen guys who either are very hot or who think they're very hot trying to talk to women. And if their whole approach hinges on them pointing out how hot they are, it doesn't work mm-hmm. nine times that like, you know what I mean? If you're going up and you're like, Hey, like I'm a model and like, Hey, I'm just like hot. And it's like, we know, like you don't need to prove you're hot. What you do need to do is give me other things. So it's like, if you go up and you're talking about, again, if you're a surfer or whatever, one, you're going to piss off Jonah Hill, but two, <laughs> oh, Jonah Hill's already we never so talked mad about at Jonah you. Hill. We got to get into it. I know. What a douchebag. We can do that after this. We'll do it right after this. So don't yeah. surf with men now. So like if you're really relying on how hot you are or you're bitter about how hot you are and you can't, you know, just I mean, we need to take a step back because you need to be more than just hotness. Yeah. Especially for anyone who's going to matter. Right. But yeah, take it slow. Don't be too aggressive. Don't do the random hitting on people on Instagram. I don't think that's going to work well for you. So there you go. N- no. Yeah. I think you, I think you have to realize that no matter what you do through, unless you've already like connected with them, like if you know them, and they post a story. Oh, sure, I don't yeah. think that that's, you know, make your move there. But I think if you're just trolling and like you're getting cold calling hotties. No. Yeah. I don't think that's gonna, that's going to work for anybody. Are you telling me that those 48 models in my inbox were all real people? Oh no. Imagine. I, I mean, Hey, there, there are Tinder matches that like to this day, I have like, they could have just been yeah. real cute people that I was like, mm. I'm going to wake up in your bathtub filled with ice missing mm-hmm. something I need for sure. So Niall alluded to it. And like, by the time this comes out, it's probably going to be a month ago that this happened. But Jonah Hill, uh, I'm sure you've heard of this as well. Jonah Hill sent a text to his ex or his current partner um, well, or multiple, <laughs> multiple texts. Yes. And I'll, I'll just read it. I pulled it up here. Uh, this is this is something that he sent uh, someone he was seeing plain and simple. If you need surfing with men, boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men to model, to post pictures of yourself in bathing suit, to post sexual pictures, friendships with women who are in unstable places and from your wild recent past beyond getting a lunch or coffee or something respectful. I am not the right partner for you. If these things bring you to a place of happiness, I support it and there will be no hard feelings. These are my boundaries for romantic partnership. My boundaries with you based on the ways these actions have hurt our trust. You cannot post pictures that are sexual. You can, isn't she a model as well? She was a surfer. Oh, okay. But like she modeled for things as a result of that, right? Sure. Like, I'm sure she has some yeah. sort of, but like the idea of someone saying you can't post your pictures of yourself in a bathing suit yeah. to someone whose career is being in the water. And I know typically surfers are in like body suits when they're competing. Oh, I very much doubt he's making a distinction. Yeah. He's got like oh, also, tight clothing. You. Yeah. Also surfing with man. Yes. Well, you heard that he also like gave her the command that if she was in the water and a man came up to her, she had to immediately say, I'm going to go talk to my boyfriend and paddle to shore. What a cool fucking dude. Jonah Hill. It's funny because like, I feel like he'd done a lot for his image over the last few years where like people are like, oh, this guy's really cool. And like, he's really like taking a lot of like body shame issues to like the forefront. And he's just really working on himself. And that's like, damn, okay. I guess he's also being a gigantic piece of shit. And one of the the really important conversations that came out of this was weaponizing therapy speak. mm -hmm. Uh, You know what I mean? Like, like people going to therapy and learning these these terms. words and these mm-hmm. terms and these concepts and then weaponizing it against their partners, whether they know they're doing it or not, like whether they know that it like it's I'm being like, I'm going to intentionally, or they think that like, 
oh, I was told that I need boundaries and I was told that I need to do this. And I need, I was told to need, so now I can tell people in my life that they need to do these things for me. Like mm-hmm. setting boundaries in a romantic relationship is fine. Mm-hmm. Setting boundaries with your partner is great. Like telling people being like, Hey, you know, especially if like, if you're open or, or anything, just being like, Hey, I, like, here are some things that make me feel uncomfortable and you have a conversation, you talk about it, but to list out a thing of being like, you're a professional surfer and you you can absolutely never surf with men. Yeah. Or be caught in swimwear. It would be like someone saying, Hey, I understand you're a bartender, but you cannot work with women. You like, you cannot work with another female bartender. You can't work with lady servers. Mm -hmm. If a guest comes in, tries to order a drink, you say, sorry, I have to go call my partner. And then you fucking leave them there. And then they die of thirst. Yeah. And like boundaryless, inappropriate friendships with men. I mean, that one, like, I guess, but like, that's the agreement you get into when you get into a monogamous relationship. You know what I mean? That's the best part. It's like, yeah, he's like, oh, you can't cheat on me. It's like, yeah, aren't we exclusive? So it's like, what are you, what are you upset about then? Like, you, oh, you have an inappropriate relationship because you surf together. But like, I'm sure his boundaries, like, I'm sure that translates to him as being like a boundaryless relationship with men is like hanging out with them, going yeah. for drinks with them, hanging out in your bathing suit with them. Well, you know what I mean? Like, literally, like he said she couldn't surf with them. I, yeah. So this harkens back. Do you remember that BMX question or the mountain biking question we had? Yes. Yeah. Um, it, we should have made a joke sooner because I can't remember everything that happened. But I remember she was like, you can't BMX with women. And this is the same shit. It's so fucking funny. Like, no. So no. I think, like I said, like the, the, the important thing out of this one, we we find out another man in Hollywood is garbage. Um, so and two, what? How did that happen? But two, um, to be aware of, Despite the fact that this seems, I mean, like the the demands are dumb, so yes. it's easy for for things to ping here. But if mm-hmm. these were more subtle um, in terms of their requests, yeah, it would be very easy to feel like, oh, I overstep bounds. Oh, mm-hmm. he's being he's being a good partner by communicating, and it's like, no, that's not what setting boundaries are about. That's not what this sort of like new idea of, of taking things you learn in therapy and then turning them against your partner to do also to make them do exactly what you want them to do. Better not fucking do that with this show. Don't you dare weaponize us. Jonah firstly, but everyone else too. Yeah. Don't you dare weaponize our terms. If you weaponize fucking James McAvoy's cum bucket, we're coming for you. It was a box. The bucket's fine. (laughs) Well, how do you think he got to come into the box? Dane? (laughs) Just throwing slop like troughs of yeah. No, it was a bucket, Dan. How do you oh, think no. he got it into the bucket? <laughs> he used a trough to get in the bucket. He used a bucket to get in the box. What are we doing? Winning the awards, kicking ass, selling out live shows. We just wanted to talk about Jonah Hill and and condemn his behavior because it's not okay. And no. to be aware, if your partner tries to use a therapy speech on you. Make sure that the the boundaries and the the communication that's coming out mm-hmm. are beneficial to the strength of your relationship yeah. and not specifically on them getting exactly what they want out of you and yeah. at your controlling. Expense. Yeah, controlling your life for their own, you know, yeah. satisfaction. Because I guess technically they are boundaries, but it doesn't stop them from being controlling awful pieces of yeah. shit. You know what I mean? It's like you don't just get to lump that term onto anything, right? Oh, my like, boundary is that you have to give me money. Cool. It's it's so funny because if someone sent me that text and then someone said, I'm not the right partner for you, blah, blah, blah. I'd be like, great. Yeah, you're not. Like, Bye. Fully, <laughs> fully 100%. I'm so out of here. Yeah. You'll never. Listen to me, Dane. You will never get me to stop surfing with men. I don't want you to. I want you to surf with whoever you, you want to surf with. I love you too. Uh, is it my <laughs> question? Yeah, it might be. Do you want another one? Uh, I'm, I'm, I'm going to do a question. Fucking hit me then. Black Hamtown. How damn long does it take for death grip to go away? I spare you all the spiel, but in short, I've been a heavy masturbator ever since I hit puberty. I've never been able to come from oral or PIV. I can only manage to come by myself. Decided enough is enough. And I stopped consuming porn and haven't jerked off in a month and a half now. Had sex last night. Despite her impressive skill, I still couldn't reach orgasm. It still f- just felt meh. Like I have nerve damage down there or something. Am I just broken down there? How fucking long does it take? I feel like half a functional person because of it. I have no idea. I will say it probably 
the weight of this whole situation and the being out of your like out of the present, like in your own headness of the whole thing, definitely not helping. Yeah. I think there's definitely a just as much of a mental aspect to this yes. as there is a physical one. I think you are correct. So um, that's a bummer. I got I have no idea how long people take to recover from that. I would say that I, my my suggestion to you, because there's really nothing I don't think you can do for Dick torture. Nothing you can do for Dick. Nothing you could do for Dick. Um, I'm sure maybe, you know, looking to get like a, a revitalizing vitamin E cream that is Ooh. safe to be used on Ooh. genitals, you know, like I think Should something I like that. My dick with a revitalizing ge- E cream? I don't know. I don't need it, but it sounds nice. Why not? Why not? Pamper yourself. Damn. We can do whatever we want. Damn. Just make sure, you know, if you're going to do it, just make sure one, make nah. sure you don't get any in the urethra. Because nah. that's bad, bad scene. Uh, two, make sure you don't have any cuts or cold sores or wounds. I'm going to get mine from Gwyneth Paltrow. Yeah, now, uh, hey, there's nothing. You could put whatever you want from goop on your genitals. We've learned that. Yeah, and it'll um, just fall off immediately. And then make sure make sure that, you know, it is safe to be used on, on skin around the genitals. So yeah. last thing you want to do is make things worse by, you know, ir- irritating yourself. Um, and also, you know, try it on a patch of skin that isn't your dick first to make sure that you don't have an adverse reaction to it. Get ever more dick-like skin. Yeah, start moving from the least dick-like skin, which has got to be your elbows, down to your most dick-like skin, which is, in fact, your dick. Yeah, that's a true statement. That is a correct fact you said. In between, I'm guessing, what, up your nostril? Well, no, that's like interior. That's like membrane. Yeah, but isn't your dick kind of like membrane-y? Porous membrane? I think so. I think I'm just getting confused with the question about the person that sneezed when they had the boner. Yeah. No, I think my guess would be like earlobe. <laughs> No, no, no taint. Yeah, I consider that whole kind of like all, all part of the package, you know, start from from dick and then wrap all the way around to butthole. I, mm-hmm. I consider that whole the no, no zone for trying cool creams. I would say if my cream was going to fuck me up, I don't want it on my dick and I don't want it on my butthole. So like taint, I would take. But it would be oh so hot, so sweaty yeah. these days. <laughs> and, yeah, but the other parts are. Yeah, but I, like I don't want a, an irritated taint on a hot day. Hey, let me tell you, I don't want it. But would you prefer an irritated butthole? It's true. Would you prefer an irritated dick? No, you're okay, right. So like I am, I am correct. So don't come at me like this. <laughs> I'm just saying you could try it somewhere that's not in the downstairs region. But like that's okay. Where else is close to a dick? Your earlobe is not it. It's out. It's getting barraged by the heat and by the, okay. the frost. You gotta find. You gotta find like a soft, maybe like right, like right under your neck where it's kind yeah, right of protected by the chin, yeah. right? Over there, right, right there, there. Yeah, you gotta, <laughs> you gotta get right in there. <laughs> you can hear where we're pointing. I'm not. Gonna you can see. It. You can definitely hear where we're pointing. You know yeah. where we're pointing. I want everyone, um, no matter where you are, what you're doing right now. If you're listening to this, I want you to point to where you think we're pointing. Yes, on your neck. Send us a picture as well. Not yeah. of your taint, especially not if it's inflamed. Especially if it's not looking good. <laughs> yeah, but. Your neck, go for it. Even if that's inflamed, that's okay. So, okay, back to the question. Um, One, physically, I don't think we can answer that question. I'm sure everyone's body heals at different times. I don't even know how much damage can be done in in Mm -hmm. the terms of like irreversible. Yeah. Or how much damage you personally have done. Yeah. I think it would be super helpful to you to speak to a sexual health professional. Yep. Uh, both in terms of therapy and in terms of them. Cause like I find nine times out of 10, if there's a sexual health, like physical problem, just getting a solid answer is a good chunk of processing what to do. Yep. Right. Like if you live in the, the world of being like, is this ever going to go away? Yeah. Then you're just going to spiral and, and, and think if you talk to someone and they're like, yes, cool. It takes usually between X and X time. That's cause then you have a time frame. You can think you're like, okay, mm-hmm. great, cool. And even if it's it might- long, at least you have an answer, right? If they're like, it's going to be a year. Exactly. Yes, that's going to fucking suck. But are you going to spend the next 11 months freaking out, being like, why isn't it working? And then giving up and going back and damaging exactly. it because it's never going to work? No, you're going to give yourself grace. Your mind's going to be a lot more at ease. And if something does happen between now and then and it doesn't work, you're not going to spiral. Whereas yeah. instead, you're going to start building up all these, like this baggage, right? You're going to mentally just like build this gigantic bad dam that's just going to stop you from breaking through. So, yeah. And in this case, the dam is your cum. It is. Well, the water is your cum. 
the dam is stopping your cum. Yes, it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, and then finally, I think you should talk to someone about because I don't know if the the heavy masturbation was a uh, porn addiction sort of situation. I don't think so because it sounds like just stopping cold turkey typically not an easy thing to do if you have a porn addiction. Um, and it seems like you've done it. But I still think that like talking to someone about the mental blocks that you might have as a result of this, because it's now said, I, like I, I, I can almost guarantee you at this point in time, you're getting more into the mental block territory than you are a physical issue. Yes. Cause the more you keep thinking like, Oh, I'm never going to come. I don't have any sensation. I, you know, it doesn't feel good like that. You're just telling your body, our bodies are scumbags and are working against us all the time. Yes. And your brain is just as bad. So if your brain is like, hey, this sucks. This doesn't feel good. Then yeah. your body's like, yeah, okay. <laughs> if you say so. It's bad. Also, you got to trick yourself. And then when you're having sex, be like, oh, I don't want to come. And your body will be like, okay, let's come right now. Yeah, just tell your, your partner to like every now and then say, just keep doing that. I'm going yeah. to come soon. Because mm -hmm. that's apparently the way to make every man come. And be yeah. Like, oh, like, damn oh, it. Oh, I'm, I'm almost there. And you're like, wait, no, no. Why, penis? <laughs> why? That's going to do it for our show, friends. We are going to hop on to online dating really quick, very fast. Peruse the profile, see what works, see what doesn't work, and effort to make your online dating experience a little more enjoyable. We're doing a live swipe. We're going to see what happens. This is I Kate. Don't... Oh, okay. Go for it. They're 38. Always have 15 art projects on the go. Used to travel the Arctic buying gold, and now I take photos of people for a living. Nature geek, but not aggressively outdoorsy. Love visiting new places, trying new food, and developing incredibly niche inside jokes. It's a 10. This is one of the best profiles we've had. That's a wonderful profile. You travel is... the Arctic selling gold? What the fuck does that mean? I need to know, and you sound fascinating and interesting. This is... That's this a good is profile. Such a good profile. Damn, Holy yeah. Holy shit, I... Kate. I kept waiting for it to turn, but Kate, you know, you have super like her right now. I'm, I'm super like her right now. Fuck this yeah. is one of the best profiles I've ever seen. And I rate them professionally for a living. <laughs> and I rate. All right. Hit me with your thing while I try to send this message. Uh, this is their name is blanked out. This profile is ran by Emma's friend. She's friendly, ambitious, loyal, and has a nice rack. Wink face. You gotta meet the requirements, though. Be between 5'4", five, 5'8", five, have a stable car and a job and ambitions, give her the princess emoji treatment, and handle her mood swings. Must be fit and don't be a bum. All profiles vet by me, and I'll set you guys up if I think you're good for her. Good luck. Is it, This is a woman looking for a woman or a woman looking for a man? Uh, does it say? Does not say. Because it's, I, I'm, hey, as a, as a short king, I'm refreshed that the height requirements are 5'4 to 5'8". Yeah, oh, it says it says they're straight. They're also five two. I'm a bet. Hey, great, great for me. I know there's a lot of people on there who are short and like must be six nine or hey, out. Like, <laughs> don't worry, I got one for you later. <laughs> yeah, what a surprise. Um, so if this was written by no, I don't think there's much in here. I like the princess treatment, the mood swings, the whole fact <laughs> yeah. that I have to impress this friend. Before well, I get to interact with someone I know almost nothing about other than the fact that she has great tits and goes through mood swings. Yeah, we, we've already talked it. friend, friend, gatekeep profile. So bad. Height requirements, even though they're surprisingly non-toxic, still not great. Must have a car and job and ambitions. Okay, whatever. Give her princess treatment. Sucks. Handle her mood swings. Really sucks. Must yeah. be fit and don't be a bum. It sucks. It all sucks. You get like a fucking one. Yeah, I'm giving I'm giving it one. I saved my zeros for like the real racist, homophobic, garbage profile, but mm -hmm. this is one. This is one that there's no redeeming qualities here. Now, what's the bet? She's the friend. I always assume the friend is the one trying to s steal dates. I always assume the friend is the person they just want to like. It's like when you go to like a doctor and you're like, a friend of mine put uh, Hot Wheels up his butt, and then they're like, it's you, and you're like, yeah, vroom vroom. Here we go. You want to see me go over this loop the loop? <laughs> it's my butt. The loop the loop is my butt. It's my inflamed taint. <laughs> this is Daniela. I'm Chilean and new here. I consider myself empathetic, very funny. I like to go for a walk in nature, and I also go out dancing. <laughs> I'm a little shy at first, but when I gain confidence, no one shuts me up. I love to exercise and move. I like to eat and to know new places. Must be patient with my English. I'm learning. 
This is a very sweet profile. I wish they were a little less generic about a lot of things. Uh, like, I like to eat. Okay. Like, you know, I'm going to give it an eight, though. Um, I Yes, I'm attributing some of the the genericness True. To, to learning the language. You know what I mean? Like, there mm. might be, maybe she's like, I'm a foodie. And that's what she yeah. means when yeah. she says, I no, like to eat. You know what? Right? You're right. I'm giving it a nine because I really enjoyed, I thought it was a very sweet thing. Like, oh, like, you know, accommodate my English. And then I didn't take it into account. So, um, nine. It's cute. I, I think you were right, though. I, I think this is an eight. I think. Well, dear God. What is it, man? <laughs> Hit me. Uh, this is also blanked out. Uh, must be seven foot or taller. No time wasters, please. I speak French and I'm 5'11". Instagram is this. Seven feet tall is so <laughs> tall. <laughs> it's so fucking tall. It's <laughs> so huge. It, like, good luck, I guess. Yeah, like, I just can't imagine narrow casting. There are only about two to three thousand people who are seven foot or taller. Imagine making your like your standard. Like, I hope it's a joke. I assume it's a joke. I want it to be a joke. It has to be a joke. But like, yeah, imagine being like out of you know eight billion people or whatever is on mm-hmm. this planet, being like yeah, two or three thousand. Can two or three thousand of them will can have be my considered? Attention. Yeah, yeah. Like that's a wild thing, and I would believe it was a joke if it was a better profile. But there's yeah. nothing else in there that gives me anything playful or funny or smart or witty or anything. It just seems super bland. I'm like, are you just dumb? Yeah. Like maybe if you really want to put a thing like a, a, a wage range or a height or whatever, maybe look, it's like saying only people are 108. It's like well, you get one dude. He's <laughs> he not going to last the flight. And this is the thing is like, I feel like the, the seven feet plus is like when people start getting into like, health issues because you're so tall like mm-hmm. yeah you uh, i it's i <laughs> cool no but not like us healthy sub six feet boys what up? so much health i'm also a train wreck of a human being so <laughs> i think that's going to do it for us freds you know what? i got uh, one more for you okay okay yes very let's quickly, do one more very quickly so it is a uh hinge prompt and a response i'm looking for a handsome yet adventurous billionaire who isn't a fan of prenups and has a fascination with diving to the depths of the ocean in a carbon fiber submersible. <laughs> That's good. That's a good. I like that. Hashtag funny. crush the rich. <laughs> is, that, is that what it said? No, that was me. That's that's your editorial. Okay. Yes, yeah. um, that's that's good. That's a great one. I think that that would make me laugh and I would probably respond specifically to that prompt. So I'm going to give yeah. that. I'm going to give it a nine. Yeah, I think it's a nine. I think it's funny. It's topical. Love it. Yeah. Let's, let's go do it. We love you guys. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, we mentioned we do have a live show August Sunday 6. I don't know if I think this is coming out before then. There probably won't be any tables left, but you're welcome to uh, come in and Stand. you can try. You can try to do a, a table reservation in case someone has canceled last minute. Mm-hmm. Um, you're welcome to pop in and grab a seat at the bar if there's still space. Uh, you can stand if you'd like. There's some places mm-hmm. you can like tuck yourself in and, and enjoy a beverage and, and maybe some figure food or snacks. Yeah. And uh, if you're a loyal show, fan of the show and you come and you're standing and someone in the audience isn't a loyal fan of the show, we'll do our best to drive them out by our first break. So maybe you'll get that seat after all. Yeah, I'll just drag them out to the patio and throw them off the thing. So, yes, uh, please come see the show. Uh, we are hopefully going to Well, we're going to do. More. We have at least two more. I think we've signed on for. So yeah. we will. We, there will be other chances, but uh, this is a good lesson to not sleep on it when we announce the show. And I know I know that doesn't mean much because we pretty much filled up before we announced yeah, the show. We've but been getting exponentially quicker sellouts, which is rad for us. But like also we feel bad that a lot of our like regulars didn't even get a chance to try the book. So. We'll try to give you guys better warning next time. You guys got to try to give us quicker fingers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, also, if you would like more of the show and you want to support the show, please head on over to fbuddiespodcast.com. Click the Patreon link. That'll bring you to our Patreon. We do an extra episode every month called Pillow Talk. We're Lucy. We're Lu- Goosey. We have some fun. We do some things. And finally, if you have a question, hey, same website fbuddiespodcast.com click the contact form you can fill out your name you can put uh, your agent name we keep things completely anonymous and we'll answer it as soon as possible yeah and if you like us and you want more of us and you already are on pillow talk or you want even more we have another podcast called no quest for the wicked which you should go check out because it's awesome 
It is. A lot I can of fun. say that because Dane crafts it, so I'm not even being arrogant. Thank you, Josh Eagle Navar Cities, for the song Paper Stars. And uh, y'all want to settle back for some bad sex writing? I'd love to. Uh, this is a Reddit post. My 23-year-old female husband, 24-year-old male, thinks our son is gay when he's only a year old. Here are some of the reasons he thinks our son is gay. He loves when the light shines through the window in a way that makes rainbows on the floor. He was curious about my makeup and has tried to take my lipstick and eyeliner. It reminds him of crayons. He generally prefers me to my husband. I wonder why. He likes to help me peel bananas. And one time my husband saw him mouth the tip of it. He got angry at me for letting him do something that looks sexual. What the fuck? His favorite thing to do outside right now is look at flowers that are blooming and touch them. My husband thinks he likes books too much for a boy. I guess I'm gay as fuck. There's also a character in one of the books my son always points and smiles at because he has bright orange hair, son's favorite color. But my husband thinks he has a crush on the character. I don't even know what to say. Imagine being this unhinged. It's like, babies put everything in their mouth, my man. Yeah. Like, And the fact that you're like, hey, that kid's sucking that dick is... That's the more worrying part. The fact that everything you see is gay is concerning to me. And the thing is, is like... So what if he is? Yeah, that's that's the thing. It's like, cool, great. You need to be fucking okay with that or you're the fucking shittest dad right now. So yeah. get your fucking shit together. I would this if I was this like mom, I'd be like, hey, you need to tell me right now if our son ends up being gay, are you cool with it? And if he's like, no, I'm going to disown him. Yeah. I would be like, great, cool. I would like a divorce and I'm and I'm out. Me and, me and baby are gone. And let this kid fucking chase rainbows and touch flowers. It's the cutest shit. This <laughs> kid just out being like a fucking like model baby doing the cutest photo ops. Yeah. Yeah. And this dad's being literally the worst cartoon villain. I will say we'll end with the comments real quick. You should see the gay crap. My son pulls smiling at me every time I walk in the house, like <laughs> face palm emoji yelling daddy at me. A grown ass man. We have to stop this poison. Next one. My little boy straight up hugs me and then he kisses my face. I throw balls to him and he doesn't even get angry and he can't catch it. He just laughs. <laughs> They're all sarcastic. Love it. Thank you very much for listening. My name is Dave Miller. And I'm Nal Spain. Be better to your son. And we've been your fuck buddies. Be better to your sons. <laughs>